Hi, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how we can prove that a sine theta minus b cos theta is identical to r sine theta minus alpha, where a, b, r and alpha are constants. And to calculate r, it is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and alpha is the inverse tan of b over a. Okay, well to prove this, what I'm going to do is in fact start from the right hand side and show you that this is identical to this. So we'll make a start then by saying that now r sine of theta minus alpha, well what's this going to be identical to? Well it's going to be identical to r multiplied by the expansion of sine of theta minus alpha. And it's very tempting to think that this is sine theta minus sine alpha, but it's not, okay? So don't make that mistake. When we have to expand something like this, we need to draw on an identity. This identity here, which you should really be familiar with. The sine of one angle minus another angle, A and B say, okay? That's not the A and B that I'm using up here, by the way, okay? It's so just learn this identity. The sine of A minus B is identical to sine A cos B minus sine B cos A. So how does that relate to this? Well, if I take A as being theta and this B as being the alpha, then this expansion becomes sine of A, A being the theta here, cosine of the B value, alpha, then we have minus sine of b, so that's sine of alpha, and then cosine of a, so cosine theta. Alright, so that's the expansion then of the sine of theta minus alpha. So we'll just take this away now and we'll carry on expanding this. So if we expand the bracket what we get is r sine theta cos alpha minus r sine alpha cos theta. Now what I'm going to do is just rearrange this a bit. I'm going to rearrange this first term. I'm going to say that that's r cos alpha multiplied by sine theta. So I've just turned those two parts round. I'm going to keep this one the same. You'll see why in a moment. r sine alpha cos theta. Now, I said to you that r was a constant and alpha was a constant. So, if r and alpha are constants, then r cos alpha must be a constant, and the same with r sine alpha, that must be a constant. So, I can say that this is identical to a constant, let's call it a, times sine theta, and for r sine alpha, that's a constant, so I can call it b as a constant, times cos theta. So I've been able to prove, first of all, the first stage of this, that r sine theta minus alpha is identical to a sine theta minus b cos theta, where a and b are constants. Okay? Now, let's just compare what these constants are. We need to get the value of r and alpha. So what I can do is you can see, let's just underline that in red, that corresponds to r cos alpha. And if I underline the b, that corresponds to r sine alpha. Notice the minus is taken care of here. All right, so b is just r sine alpha. So if we compare the constants, we might as well say where Let's, let's start with this one here, where r sine alpha okay, is equal to the b, and r cos alpha, well that's equal to the a. And if I number these two equations, say 1 and 2, then I've got simultaneous equations, which I can work out to find r and alpha. And in this situation, to get alpha, 
one of the best ways that I can get alpha is just simply by dividing them. So if I was to say 1 divided by equation 2, what's that going to give us? Well, if I divide equation 1 by equation 2, can you see that the R's would cancel? And I would get sine alpha over cos alpha. And sine alpha divided by cos alpha is better known as tan alpha. So you get tan alpha equals b over a. And what does that mean? Well, it means that therefore alpha is equal to the inverse tan of b over a. And that's what we had to show up here. All that's left to do is to find out what r is. And one of the simplest ways of finding r is to do equation 1 squared plus 2 squared. So we'll do that down here. We'll say 1 squared plus equation 2 squared gives. Well, what does it give us? Well, if I square number 1, I'm going to get r squared sine squared alpha okay, is equal to b squared. And if I square 2, I'm going to get r squared cos squared alpha equals a squared. And if I add those two together, I've got r squared sine squared alpha plus r squared cos squared alpha is equal to b squared plus a squared. Now then, I can factorize the left hand side here and pull out r squared as a common factor. So I get sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. And that's going to be equal to b squared plus a squared. Now I'm just going to turn that around for convenience. It looks nicer if I write it in alphabetical order, a squared plus b squared. Now, you should know the identity that sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of the same angle is always 1. Sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha will always be 1. So what we've got is r squared times 1 equals a squared plus b squared. And r squared times 1 we know is just simply r squared. So that's going to be equal to a squared plus b squared. So to get r, all I need to do is take the square root of both sides. So we get r equals the square root then of a squared plus b squared. And there you have r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Alpha is the inverse tan of b over a. So rather than have to repeat all of this work in any question that you may do, try and learn this identity. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you're able to follow my methods.